Okay, so it is October 8th, and this is Science of Cooking, and today um, your demo is going to be on knife skills, um, and also how to make your vegetables, all the many, many vegetables I'm going to be cutting today, into a chicken stock. All right, um, so I have here an assortment of veggies for you, okay, um, that are what we call aromatics, right? So things that are going to give a lot of flavor to a stock, um, but also great for practicing your knife skills and your cutting and things like that as well, okay? So if you have any questions, just throw them in the chat. Um, other students, you guys can feel free to answer people's questions if they miss something before they came in. Um, so I have celery, right? With some celery leaves too, right? <clears throat> so when you buy a bunch of celery and you have this in the middle, oftentimes people throw away the celery leaves, right? Because they don't know what to do with them. These are excellent for a stock, right? The celery leaves are actually the smallest part of the celery because it's still growing on the inside and actually is more tender and more flavorful. So don't throw away your leaves for stalks and soups and things like that. Throw those in there, right, to help give it more flavor, okay? Um, good old-fashioned carrots, right? These have all been washed and cleaned. Um, you don't have to peel things for your stock. You can still use the ends, what they consider, you know, the scrap pieces. Um, I will peel to show some cuts today, but this is all going to end up in this big stock pot that I have here, um, starting uh, with a little bit of cold water for it, okay? <clears throat> and also onions, right? Um, you can use any kind of onion, a white onion, yellow onion, red onion. Um, you will get a little hint of color from the red onion, but not enough for it to matter after the stock cooks for like six to eight hours, okay? And then garlic, another aromatic, right? Um, and this is going to help add some flavor to the stock. So this is a bulb of garlic. So I'm going to open this up afterwards and show you guys how to mince the little cloves, the individual cloves, okay? Um, so there is a difference. So if it says one clove of garlic, it doesn't mean this whole thing. It just means the one piece on the inside, which you're going to see, okay? Um, and then to make the chicken stock, to give it chicken flavor, right? Use chicken scrap pieces, bones, things like that. So for today, we've got some chicken paws, chicken feet, right? Um, they're cheap, they're low cost, and, you know, you may be able to save chicken bones and things left over from um, meals if you roast a whole chicken for dinner this week. Save that carcass, all those bones, throw them in a Ziploc bag, throw them in your freezer, and then the next time you're ready to make a chicken stock, pull that out, throw that in the pot, right? Don't waste any of that stuff. Um, but I am going to start off today with the celery, because that's one of the easier things to cut, because it's softer, right? than your um, carrots. Carrots are good to practice with, but they tend to be um, a little bit harder, right? So it's, you know, something that you want to be really careful when you're cutting. So I've got my cutting board set up here. I'm just going to grab a cloth. Okay, so I've got my wet cloth that I'm going to put under the cutting board so that it won't slide. And then I have a chef knife. Here, ready to go. I also have a paring knife in case I need it, right? I've got my towel, you know, so I can wipe my hands and things as I go. Um, and then the other thing that I have is some spices and stuff that I'll go into the stock after, okay? But like I said, I'm going to start with the celery first. Now, when you're looking at stocks of celery, like I said, oftentimes if you're trimming these down um, to put into a dish and things, you want to look for any bad spots, which you would consider things that are a little bit dried out and stuff. Um, for our instance, this is be able to go right into that um, vegetable stock. So I'm not gonna throw any of these pieces away today. They are gonna get saved and go into the pot, okay? So normally you would cut off the end on the bottom as well, right? But like I said, these are great for stock. These can also be put into a bag, into the freezer until you have enough of them to make a stock. Um, now I know that I've got, um, you know, say a dish that I'm, I want some celery sticks to go with, you know, a veggie platter or, um, you know, maybe some chicken wings, things like that. So what I'm going to show you guys today is that batonne cut, right, to make the little sticks. So remember with your knife, three fingers on the handle, right, one finger on this side, your thumbs on this side, so that way you have a nice tight um, hold on your blade as you go. And these are all sharpened yesterday in class, right? Um, so with this here, I want to have about two to three inch pieces. So when I'm looking at that size piece of celery, I'm going to be able to get about three cuts out of it right, so I can have it somewhat on a uniform size. Um, when you're making your cuts, you can take, you can put the celery this way, right, where it's going to go down, and I'm just going to make my little sticks, okay. 
So you, the key is to try to have things as uniform as you possibly can, right? So when you're having your sticks. You can also cut around something, okay? So meaning that I can come in this way and keep coming down. Now these fingers here, remember, are gonna be curved in. That thumb is gonna be tucked, right? So when you're practicing these things at home, okay? Um, always keeping that other hand protected, right? And I'm just kind of rolling this down as I go so I can get my little celery sticks, right? Now for, this is all just going in the pot behind me. Uh, the other thing is too for celery is to do just some basic slices, right? Um, so I said I'm going to take those ends, throw them in the pot. Now, if I wanted to have this for, say, like a chicken salad or things like that, I can take and just do slices. So I can keep this hand here, right, and this will work its way back down the celery stalk, right? My knife is in my right hand, right? So if you're right-handed, if you're left-handed, be in your left hand, right? Um, so when you're cutting... Part of it is that I don't need to take this knife off every time, right? I don't need to hack and chop. I want to kind of have a rolling glide. So the tip of this knife is going to stay on the cutting board, okay? And I'm going to come in and I'm going to feed that celery a little at a time. And if you're real nervous at first cutting, right, keep your hand further away. You don't have to be right up close. You can stay further back, right? And I'm just going to feed the celery in. Okay. As you get more comfortable with it, you can get up closer to that. And then I just slowly keep, with this hand, pushing that celery piece a little bit forward. Right. Now, I'm taking all these different cuts today. Like I said, I'm going in the pot. Um, but that trick is to keep that blade on the board, right? So you're just rolling it through gentle. There's no need to whack things all the time, right? Um, you're not trying to kill the celery. Okay. Right, there's a bad spot on this piece. I'm going to cut that out. That to the side. Like I said, if anything's damaged, I don't want to save it. Um, now, I can take you know something like this that's a larger piece of celery, right? If it's a little bit too big, I can just cut it down the center and make that into smaller pieces, right? Because then that would more closely match the skinnier stalks of celery. So if I'm doing a soup and things like that, I want to try and keep those pieces as close to the same size as possible. Um, so that way you're not eating a little chunk and then a big chunk, right? Because then if it's too big, this will take longer to cook if it's a whole piece than this will, right? So this will get soft and mushy while this might still be a little bit chewy. So try and get your pieces all close to the same size when you're making your dishes, your soups and things. Now, one simple cut to do on a celery just to make it look a little fancier is what we call a bias cut. Right? So normally I would have it so that my knife is right here, right? And I'm making my cuts across. So if you turn that knife, 45 degree angle, I'm going to go this way across and it's going to give me a nice little bias cut. Okay? Now with that bias cut, what you're going to see, right, is this. So it gives you a nice long, fancier looking piece. And all I had to do was just turn that knife from straight to the side a little bit. Right. Like I said, remember to do that rolling slide as you go. Just keep feeding that celery in. All right. And you can do this bias cut with celery, carrots, cucumbers, right? Um, squash, it's like summer squash, zucchini. So if you're doing a veggie dish, right, it makes it look prettier, um, makes the pieces look a little bit bigger too. So it looks like you have more, okay? Even though it's the same piece of celery, when you compare the two, right, you can see which one looks prettier, okay, which is always this one. So that's just a little chef trick there. All right, so I'm going to do a few more of those. Like I said, so instead of having it straight, having it at that angle, right, and I said you can keep these fingers back further, or as, as you get more comfortable, just you can go closer. Just remember to keep them curled in like a claw machine. Okay, and we have our celery there. Okay. All right. Um, when it comes to the celery leaves, like I said, I don't want to waste those, these little tender pieces of celery. I'm just going to take and just rough chop this real quick. This is going to go in the pot, that center stem. 
but the leaves I want to use as well, right? Like I said, because these have a lot of that actual celery flavor, more than the outside base stems do. So for this, I want to take and bunch it up as much as possible, right? And this would be similar to a chiffonade um, that you could do with basil. And I'm just going to slice through, right? I want to get this at least started. I need to chop up my leaves. So this will help release all the flavors from that, right? Same thing you would do with fresh herbs. And then I can take, put my hand up here, and I'm just picking up the back of the knife, right? I'm still keeping that tip of the knife on the board. I'm just coming through, right? Scrape it back into a pile. And you can see those nice little pieces of leaves there. Okay. This will all go into the pot with the other veggies. So the next one I'm going to show you is going to be the carrots. Now, carrots you can do all kinds of little fancy cuts with that I showed you yesterday on the handout. Um, and if you're using these in a main dish, you'd want to peel them, right? So you can, um, this is a just a wide peeler, which I tend to prefer because it um, takes off larger strips, right? And peelers tend to go in one direction, um, they are skinnier peelers. That's what you have at home. That's fine. Right? You just want to make sure that it's sharp enough to take the skins off. Right? Um, you don't necessarily always have to peel carrots, but you need to wash them really well. Right? And all this has been washed this morning. Um, like I said, this was scrubbed, so I'm not worried about it. So I'm going to throw this into the pot right? because all these peels are going to give a lot of flavor to the stock. Um, same thing with the ends, right? So if I trim off the ends, those can go into the stock pot. So these are the kind of scraps that you would normally save. And then you have your carrot. So if you were doing a nicer dish or soup, you probably want to peel it just for um, aesthetics, for looks more than for actual um, need to, right? Like I said, it's all about just having the carrots nice and clean. Okay. So I want to take it, I'm going to cut this in half to make a more workable piece. Now, if I wanted to do sticks or cubes or things out of a carrot, it's hard because it rolls, right? Um, you get some movement to it. So what you want to do is carefully take off one side. And this is why you want to have those really nice sharp knives, right? So I'm making a flat spot. So now I can set the carrot down, and it's not going to roll across the cutting board, right? It's going to stay here. So what I want to do is square this carrot off to help give me more of a square shape. So I'm going to come down this side, and I'm going to flip it, I'm going to come down this side, and I'm not worried about this going to waste because this is all for my stock pot, right? And I'm going to come down on this side, okay? So now I have my little squared off piece of carrot, right? Um, and I'm going to make some slices as I go down. So I've got three or four, take four, okay. And then I can make carrot sticks out of this, right? So now that I have them squared down, I can come in and I can cut some little julienne sticks, right? A little thicker would be a batonne cut. I can do them really super fine as well, um, or I can turn these into little cubes. So if I wanted to have little diced, tiny diced carrots for my soup or for a rice dish, Right. So you keep your fingers back as much as you're comfortable with when you're first starting out, right? And now I'll have my little small dice, right? Little fine dice pieces. Okay. So I can do this into um, a finer cut, right? Like I said these are about all about the same thickness. So I can put this on what they call a crudite which would be a vegetable tray. So maybe on the holidays you have a veggie tray out on Thanksgiving or Christmas and things, right, so people can snack on um, while they're waiting for dinner to be finished. So you want to have them all about the same size, right, like I said, or they could go on the side of your buffalo wings. Um, on this piece of the carrot, I'm going to take and do um, the same thing. I'm going to square this off, but I'm going to do a much thinner cut because I want to do a really nice fine julienne, right, which would be more of your matchstick cut. Get some of this out of the way. All right. So for that, instead, I want to be really, really thin. 
right? So thin enough where it can actually bend the care piece, right? And that's gonna give me my really nice, fine, fine cuts. Okay. I can take and stack some of these. Okay. And then the same thing, I'm gonna do a nice, thin cut. So now if I was doing a stir fry, I want something that's really cut thin and small, right? So that it'll saute up really quickly, okay? Show you that again. That's it, just nice and thin. So just try to keep nice straight lines. And this is the best way to practice, right? Is just to keep doing it. So maybe you make some fancy, you know, fine julienne carrots for dinner, you know, this weekend, right? Um, practice makes perfect when it comes to any kind of knife skills and knife cuts. So don't be afraid to try them over and over and over and over again. You can never be too good at your knife skills, okay? Um, so let me put this into the pot real quick. So this is going to be filled with all kinds of different size pieces and cuts and things. Um, I said with those carrots, I'm going to show you that bias cut again so you can see real quick. Let's give this a quick little feel so it looks nice. Right. And if you want to do, you can do um, just plain circles with your carrots, right? or you can do um, more of those bias cuts. And right now, this time of year, carrots are in season in our area, so they tend to be really, really big, right? If they were small, skinny little carrots, doing a little circle cut um, is a little bit easier because it um, is small, right? It starts to get, you know, if you're doing a circle cut this size, right, that's a little bit too big to put in somebody's soup, okay? Um, but I could do it, still do it with this piece down here, right? And I could just have some, remember that rolling cut? And I could have my little circles. Right? So these are just a basic circle carrot. Good for soups, you know, beef stew, things like that. That's a good size. You know, you don't want to be too thick on the cut because it'll take a lot longer to cook the thicker that it is. Now, when I get into these thicker parts of the carrots, like I said, they tend to get a little bit too big. So what you can do is cut down through the center of the carrot. So if you take your fingers on both sides, keep them safely away, right? And then I'm gonna split it. Split right there. And then I have a more workable piece, right? So I can take, if I want larger pieces of carrots for things like that bias cut, that same angle cut. Right. I can come through that way. You can see how pretty those look, right? So if I did a combination of veggies of, you know, bias cut carrots and squash, zucchini, and things, um, the celery all together, it'll be really pretty shape-wise, right? Just trim off that little bad spot. But remember, these get much bigger. So this would be good for a, you know, a side vegetable. Um, if you were doing like a honey glazed carrot, some dill carrots, things like that. But not necessarily a good size for soup, right? Um, I could go smaller still on this carrot, right, if it's too big, and cut it down in half again. And if you're worried about cutting all the way across, cut down on the bottom half of the carrot and split it. Turn it around and come back up, find your cut, and cut the other half, right? So then now I could take and make some cuts this way. So I could come in and do just some small little cuts and try and keep them about the same size. So as it gets wider at the top, if I find that it's still too big, I could cut that in half again. And then this would be a good consistent size carrot to go to, you know, into all kinds of dishes. Um, but it'll cook about the same amount of time because it's the same size, right? And I can still do that bias cut, this piece here. And it's all about having them a uniform size. So that way when I cook these in a pot of boiling water or whether I'm sauteing them or stir frying them, these carrots all take about the same amount of time to cook. I don't want super big pieces and little tiny pieces in the same pot, okay? Because some will get mushy and some will still be hard, all right? Um, another fun one, which is everybody's, every student's least favorite when we start cutting these, um, but very necessary because of flavor, right, is onions, okay? Um, these are just plain, you know, good old yellow onions. 
Uh, when you're looking at onions, I grow these in my garden, right? Uh, this is the root end. This is what goes down on the ground. They grow up with dirt up around the outside. And this is the stem end. So you get these long green shoots that come out of the top. Um, and as the onion ripens, that starts to dry out. You trim that off and then you're left with the, the little onion top there. Um, and then you've got your peels, right? So these are, onions make their own peels. So this is just the outside layer of the onion. After it's been out of the dirt for a little while, it starts to change color and makes itself its own little package, okay? Um, so with the onion, what I'm gonna do, a couple of things. I don't want to take this root end apart, okay? I wanna keep this intact. This will make it easier for you to learn how to cut um, because the pieces aren't gonna be falling apart all over the place. So I'm gonna trim off that stem end instead, right? The part that comes up out of the ground. So I'm gonna trim that off. But remember, this can still go in your stock pot because it's just the onion skin, right, and stem. So in the pot it goes. Now I'm gonna put my onion this way, okay? Just a little bit. And I'm gonna cut right down through the center of the root. So when you're doing this, you can take, put your hand on top and use that to help push your knife down. So now this is gonna make this onion easier to peel. So I'm gonna do some sliced and some diced. Okay, so like I said, I'm gonna save these onion skins though for the stock pot. And keeping that root intact keeps all those little many, many layers. So if any of you guys remember Shrek, right? Onion has many layers. You wanna keep that all together. It's just gonna make it easier to peel and easier to cut, right? So all that goes to the stock pot. All right. So now I'm gonna do a couple of things. I'm gonna do some sliced onions here. Now, when you're looking at the onion, right, you can see a little rainbow shape, right? Here's my rainbow curve. So I wanna make some rainbow slices, okay? So that way, when I slice it down, if I wanted to put these on some burgers, or I wanted to have some you know, sliced onions and peppers to go with some grilled sausages or things like that, I want to have some nice cuts. I don't want to go this way because the cuts are going to look a little strange. Um, I want those nice half circle pieces. Okay. So for that, I'm going to hold the onion back here towards the root end right here. Right. So the root end is towards the palm of my hand. And then I'm just going to slice down. Right. And you want to see, like I said, all those little rainbows. Right. We start to take them apart. Okay. So these pieces are great for putting in tops of your, um, your tossed salads. It says you want to throw a couple of strips of onions on your burger, or if you want to saute them with some, you know, bell peppers, it's a great size, right? And I could go thinner on that too. You know, it's just the amount that you slice down. You know, so if I wanted some real nice thin sliced onions, just do a thinner cut, okay? But remember when you're doing sliced onions, look for that rainbow in the onion. There you go. And yes, onions will make you cry a little. Okay, and I'm gonna use this end piece too, because like I said, it's a lot of flavor. Um, when you're cutting onions, a couple of tricks is to not breathe through your nose, breathe through your mouth, okay? Um, because the smell goes right up into your sinuses and it will uh, start to make your eyes water, okay? So with this onion half, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna do some dice in it, because maybe I want some finely chopped onions to go on my hot dogs, right? Um, so I don't want the big giant pieces, I want smaller pieces, or if I'm putting them into a soup or a pasta sauce or things like that, right? Um, so hand on top of the onion, I'm gonna take, here's the root end, all right? I'm gonna cut it in a little bit of an angle, so you can see the angle of the knife, right? I'm gonna come in and cut down just a little bit, but I don't wanna go all the way through, okay? I just want to open that up a little bit. And now I'm going to make some cuts because here's my root, right? I want to make some long cuts towards me just to open this onion up some, but I don't want to cut through that root piece. Okay. Don't worry if you lose a couple of pieces, but this is kind of what you're doing, right? You're opening it up like a flower, but it's still attached. Okay. Because now I'm going to do that same slicing down Except this time, I'm gonna get my diced, right? So this is perfect for soups, stews. Like I said, if you put a little chopped onion on your hot dogs, right? And I can do a finer cut on these as well, just 
depends on how many slices I make in it vertically. When you get near the end, right, it gets a little scarier, cut down, and I can take and just chop those last few pieces, right? And I don't like to waste anything, so I can just cut right up around the core. So normally all I would have left would be this. Right? Um, but like I said, that's going to go in the stock pot for today. All right. So that's part of my aromatics, right? So with those three, my carrots, my celery, my onions, that's what we call, the French call it mirepoix, right? That's kind of the foundation ingredients for just about every good French recipe, right? Um, and then we're going to add in the garlic for more aromatic flavor, okay? So when you bust open the bulb of garlic, right, it's the head of garlic, you will see individual cloves, okay? Now, same thing on garlic. They make their own paper, their own skin. You can use the paper in your stock box, okay? It's still going to give off flavor, all right? So with the garlic, they make all kinds of fancy, expensive tools to press garlic, smush garlic, roll it in the tube. There's all that stuff, shake it in a jar and things. Um, the fastest way to do this, okay, is to take your knife over the top of the garlic clove. I got my garlic clove here, right? Give it a couple of whacks. The peel will come right off. Okay. So I popped it open. So I could just take it, I could throw something whole if I wanted a whole clove of garlic in something, right? Um, these are some big cloves of garlic. But I'm going to chop these up really small. And when you chop things up nice and fine, that technique is called mincing. Now, I see that little root stem on there? I want to get rid of that. So normally if this was going into a dish, like I said, um, you know, I was adding garlic into something. I don't want that little dried out piece of the stem, so you would trim that off. Okay. And now I'm going to mince up this garlic. So I'm going to add, because it gets a little slippery, okay? So I'm going to add in a little bit of salt, okay? So now, just like, you know, when you got icy steps, right, on the front of your house, that little salt is going to give me a little bit of traction to my garlic, right? So I'm going to come in, my hand on top here. Right, and I'm just going to roll my knife back and forth through. The tip of that knife is staying on the cutting board. Right, and this would be like a chopped garlic at this point, right? Because it's a little bit rougher. If I want to have it minced, it just means I need to cut more, right? A lot more. Right. So just keep running that knife through it. And you can buy minced garlic in the store in jars and things, but you're not going to get that same intense flavor as you will if it's fresh garlic, okay? Now, one of the problems that students always worry about is the smell, right? Um, when you're working with things like garlic and onions on your hands, okay, um, the scent does linger, all right? Um, but you can get rid of that, okay? Wash your hands really well. But when you're washing your hands, scrub your hands with a spoon, right? So put the soap on your hands, rub the spoon all over your fingers. Make sure it says stainless steel on your spoon, right? And it will get rid of the scent of garlic and onion on your hands, right? So that's our minced garlic there, right? Nice, finely, finely chopped. Okay. You can see it there, all right? House is going to smell good today. All right. I can see you guys again. <laughs> all right. So what I'm going to do is throw in all this garlic into the stock box. So everything's been going into the big pot behind me. Okay. I know it's a little hard to see everything that's happening. Um, and I will be showing you what this looks like tomorrow. Okay. So now, a couple last things I want to add into this stock box. All right. One of them is herbs. This is uh, fresh thyme that I've been growing. So I'm going to snip off a couple pieces of fresh thyme. And I'll snip off a couple more later in the other classes. So don't worry. There'll be about half of that plant in there by the end of the day. So a little bit of thyme. You want to throw in a couple of bay leaves. Okay. Um, and this is the leaf from the laurel plant. Right. So I'm going to throw in a couple of bay leaves. And I want to use some whole peppercorns, right? So this is before the pepper gets ground. This is what they look like. Okay. 
policy there, right? We'll see the color, right? So they can be black, they can be white peppercorns, green peppercorns, they can be a mixture of, that's fine. Um, and then I want to add in the chicken feet, right? It is, right? Um, these bones here are going to make a good stock, so they're just going to go right in the pot. And then I'm going to start this with some cold water, all right? Always cold water when you're making a stock. Let it slowly come up to a boil and turn it down to a simmer, okay? Um, if you use hot water when making a stock, it'll make your stock more cloudy, right? Um, and you want a nice, clear, um, colored chicken stock, okay? All right, so I'm going to stop recording for today. Take some questions.